All right, Erad is in the house. His second channel here. Not getting a lot of love, but we're going to change that. I got a video coming out about 400 million and what, what was raised for Star Citizen, why it got that uh, amount of money uh, in, in basically that income uh, or revenue. It's not necessarily income unless they, uh, you know, report it as such. So it, it's, it's a very successful uh, project. That's, that's the whole point. And so that video is going to be coming out. This video is interesting here from his second channel, The Eradicators. I am subscribed. Go over there. Check it out. Uh, and apparently this video is about Paul Jones. Now, Paul Jones is a member of the Cloud Imperium Games team. Paul Jones is a very nice dude. Paul Jones actually donated to DG360 when we were having some PC issues. So I got love for Paul Jones. We like to call him motherfucker jones over here motherfucker jones that's what that's usually how we refer to paul over here uh but this apparently paul wrote a book and uh erad ba basically does a review of this book now i'm not quite sure what we're going to get into here because we are talking about a book so you know this might be a little too intellectual for some of you. We've already lost seven or seven viewers because they're like, wait a second. We're talking about a book? Reading? The fuck? <laughs> but let's, let's check it out. Let's check it out. That intro was done by Anarchy, by the way. And the guitar playing is from E-Rad. Hello and welcome to the channel, it's The Eradicator, and today we'll have a very special video as I am going to do something I haven't done since my younger days at university, because I'm going to review for you guys a book, and not just any book, it's a book that I think makes sense for this channel since it aims at attracting a general audience interested in gaming, and so we'll be reviewing Game Artist, The Ultimate Career Guide, written by Cloud Imperium Game Art Director Paul Jones, I hope, I hope that the, like, right when you open this up, there's a large penis. Like, like, that would be the ultimate meme. That would be the best fucking, that, like, honestly, that would be the most fucking hilarious thing ever. If the, if you open it up and the first page is a giant peen with some balls, man, that would be fucking Hilarious. Paul, did you do it? That's my question. Which I just finished reading and I found absolutely fascinating. Now, just to make Damn it clear, it. this is not a sponsored video. In fact, I have never had any contacts with Cloud Imperium Games, the studio behind Star Citizen, in any capacity, except for them following me on Twitch. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but that's about it. Uh, what you are going to hear here are always my genuine impressions and feelings and why I think you should <laughs> read this book if Gosh. you're interested in not just being a game artist, but gaming in general, because this book covers a lot of behind-the-scenes aspects that you'd normally never think of. So, the first thing I'm going to say about this book is that I really appreciated that Paul Jones makes no concessions. Uh, he goes all in in a no bullshit approach about what works and what doesn't, what are the do's and don'ts of the profession, and what the industry's expectations versus what would be the general audience's perceived expectations are. Just to give you an example, <laughs> at the beginning, the author says straight to our faces that set the tone do for this not entire care highlight, about our I? gender, religion, and other kinds of preferences, and that the only thing that matters <laughs> is talent, work, and dedication, and dedication, and I was so happy to read this, especially in this day and age in which so many people on social media give so much importance to such trivial details that are and should remain private, and thus unrelated to a professional environment. I think that Paul Jones was very wise to include this particular passage at the start of the book because it sets the tone from the beginning. There is no complacence, there is no compromise, there's only going to be the truth. And to me, at least, doing so made me proceed with the reading with serenity, knowing that the author's work and intent were genuine and that there's no other intention here than educating us about the gaming industry. The next element that I think is really Good morning, important Anarchy. Is How are you doing? I'm going to get right back here. We're at the 2 minute 46 second mark. But since Anarchy is here, I would just like to say, Anarchy, this intro that you have made for the Eradicator puts every one of my intros to shame. How dare you, Anarchy? No, just... just 
just teasing, dude. Good work. Good work on that. Good work, bro. You're doing good work. And I'm going to have Anarchy on a podcast, and I'm really looking forward to it. He's going to be on break. We're going to have a really interesting podcast for our VIP members. We're going to talk about Star Citizen, his favorite ship, what he loves in terms of the art in Star Citizen. We're going to talk about crypto. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of shit with Anarchy, and we're going to have that hopefully uh, before the end of the year. That will be very fun. But this is an excellent, excellent intro that you've done for the Eradicator, leaving all of my intros to shame. That is right. Thank you, Anarchy, for shitting on my head. No, just teasing, just teasing. Okay, let's get back to Erad's uh, review of Paul Jones. By the way, Paul Jones, wh- what is he involved in when it comes to the art? Is he? I know it's shipped. I know there's a bit of ship design. I know there's a bit of ship design. Uh, I- I'm not quite sure if there's like camera. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So character animations, pretty much the whole gambit. If he's the art director, uh, then he is kind of overlooking everything. I wonder if he does any like detail work on any of these. I think that there's probably some work that he did on the Odyssey, and which which why he called it the Carrot Killer, because I feel like there's some vested interest into the Odyssey. That would be interesting to know uh, for sure. I should ask around in the Cloud Imperium community. Thank you, Kill Devil, for that subscription, bro. Thank you so much. All right, let's let's get let's get with this. Compares the points of views and approaches of both right? that's sides what I was of the mirror. The candidate versus the recruiter, the interviewee versus the interviewer, the junior employee versus the senior staff, the supervisor versus the manager, and the manager versus the director. In fact, uh, the author himself has climbed all the steps of the ladder to get to the very top that allows him to share information and, dare I say, wisdom that would otherwise not have the same credibility if they were coming from someone a bit younger or less experienced. And the most interesting part about all of this is that you don't have to be yourself in the gaming industry or trying to make it into the gaming industry to appreciate the experience shared throughout the 394 pages of the book. For example, when Jones goes into the details about the recruitment process, he compares how and why recruiters decide to hire the services of headhunters and why and how this ultimately benefits candidates. He just doesn't give us facts and anecdotes. He actually goes further by actually interviewing actual people specialized in their particular fields, in this case, a headhunter specialized in recruiting game artists. And so, throughout this interview, we go much deeper into not only the process and methods, but also the psychology involved, as well as the human approach. And all of a sudden, what was a two-sided story between uh, an employee and uh, a candidate enters into a three-way dimension, which I thought was very interesting because we naturally tend to focus on our own side only and eventually the side of the recruiter as for Mm. most people myself including trying to put ourselves into the shoes of another party is always a perilous exercise and by giving us these different perspectives i didn't realize that that the art world was so very a lot of job candidates not just gaming candidates but candidates in general who read this book to perform better and go to the next step, which is the interview uh, from which we are given a Why lot do you have the Batman? Too. Like, was Paul. Ba- okay, so, like, I have a question for you, Erad, when you're editing this. Did you just do this for, like, eye candy, or was Paul act- uh, actually involved with any of uh, the Batman uh, Arkham kind of video? Did he do artwork on that? I'm kind of curious. I was just wondering. Well, now you've probably guessed, as you'd expect from a seasoned veteran professional. Oh that wow, there are a Lego lot of- City! Paul was involved with that. Did I? I must have missed something. Uh, he worked in all these games, did he? Really? That's awesome. Yeah, this is cool. Lego City Undercover on the Wii U. Paul Jones was the art director for that project. God damn, who knew Paul did so much? What's up, Kita? How you doing, buddy? How you doing? I can't read, by the way, Lou. Don't make me cry, dude. Season veteran professional that there are a lot of career advice that would apply to every profession and not just game artists. I particularly appreciated the coverage of some particular oh, aspects dealing with the all fear areas. of failing, yeah. the syndrome of the imposter, Gita. or how to handle leaving your company for another. Explains These are situations that artists. I have encountered myself and that I am sure a lot of you have or will encounter. And personally, if I had the chance to be given some of those advices earlier in my career, <laughs> there are certainly a handful of mistakes that I made that I would have avoided. 
I am also certain as a result that what I read will help me quite a bit, as there is right now no one in my career that can fulfill the role of mentor, that can provide that oh so much needed guidance that can determine whether or not you'll be successful in your position. I particularly had a good laugh when Paul Jones evokes how advice from your co-workers should be received, especially when it comes from people he calls KIAs or know-it-alls, as I am certainly ah. one of these people. I really appreciated not being alienated and even valued for what I can bring being this kind of person, despite how annoying it can sometimes be to others. And I thought that this really highlighted the benevolent approach of this book, which is really not here to point figures at but to help everyone make yes, the best of the like situations that. they encounter benevolent another is a point good word. that i've good found word choice, interesting read. being an international professional myself is how the author talked about his experience as an expatriate moving his family from his home country oh, wow. to a completely different continent in a globalized world like today's, even during our current pandemic era, there are plenty of companies that seek talents from all over the world, and having been through that process of moving from one country to another multiple times in my life, including moving from Paris to Taipei with my wife and children, I can guarantee that the advice Paul Jones gives in this book are definitely helpful and you will for prepare Epic Games you for mentally, seven years? at least, for I didn't such know a that. move that will completely change your life. Having spent more than half of my life as an expatriate myself, I have met plenty of people who were not ready for this, who then fell in depression, got divorced, or lost their jobs. In this book, Paul Jones will help you through his own experience to get ready and embrace such change with serenity and confidence. And if you are contemplating an international career, I think that the passages that cover this particular topic will what be... What is the definition of an expatriate? Hold on one second. Expatriate. What is, what is that? Well, hold on. Let me see. Uh, expatriate. A person who lives abroad. Oh, okay. All right. Uh huh. So you're switching countries. So you're. Are, do you do it for the convenience? Like, like here's a good question. Do you do it for the convenience because of work, or because you don't agree with your country's um, politics, or you know, there, there's probably a lot of reasons uh, to be an expatriate or patriot. How do you how do you say that? Uh, I love to expand my vocabulary. Uh, expatriot. Expatriot. A person who lives outside their native country. Denoting or relating to a person living outside their native country. Hold on, let's see this. Expatriate. Expatriate. Hold on, let me say it again. Expatriate. Expatriate. Am I saying that right, Pepe? Pepe? Don't ask you. What do you mean, don't ask you? Listen. Say it with me, Pepe. Expatriate. Expatriate. Say it, Pepe. Say it, Pepe! Well worth reading. Of course, we can talk about a guy's career path without you're an talking about... See, the chat says you're an expatriate. Expatriate. Pepe. Pepe. Expatriate. Yes, that's what you are. Money, and again, Paul Jones does not spare any details you're not a patriot, here. Whether you're an we are talking about salary Pepe. disparities You'll never be a patriot. or between employees of the same rank within the same office. I will obviously not go into the details here as it will be spoiled in the book, but yes, we get to know in details why it is not proper <laughs> to talk salary between co-workers in what was, in my opinion, one of the most revealing segments of the entire book. Now, before we finish, I couldn't review this book without talking about the game development. <laughs> <laughs> and at the least I'm going to say is that the more I progressed throughout my reading, the more Graves I realized like, Dude, how little I knew about game development. That. But after reading no the book, filter. No I filter. think that I have Welcome a much better understanding of the various stages through which yes, the game exactly, goes Bingo. from its original ID Thank you. Thank all the you. way to its pot. Thank you, Grizz. <laughs> Grizz is throwing me a buck. I love when Chris explains shit. great <laughs> post release phase there's an entire 62 page long section within the book with those in details featuring graphs and figures to help us the readers visualize should have been 69 pages should have been 69 pages paul see a little alpha 
or pre-alpha disclaimer at the bottom part of the trailer footage. The robot I think didn't I'll say be much anything. more aware yes. of how far along the game is. The crazy and I'm looking robot forward lady did to not say anything. practice this new insight, actually. And finally, we'll talk about how the book itself is organized. And I think that every video game lover will know, appreciate right? how it is divided into levels, just like how old school games in the 16-bit era and before used to be. It may be a detail, but moving on from level 1 to level 2 and onwards did feel satisfactory, giving me glimpses of old vibes in these from these old times. And I thought that was a nice touch. I also liked that each part ends with a recap of the key elements that were covered. The way Paul Jones presented them kind of rem reminded me of how these are presented in keynote presentations with short bullet points. And in the end, I really think that it really helped memorizing short or bullet remembering points, the points page, that were There's 394 pages, e And so these are my thoughts about Game Artist, the ultimate career guide. Wait I a second. You... Short bullet points. There's 394 pages of this. He's... He's waxing poetic, if you ask me. He's he's about 100 pages short of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just I would appreciate just the feedback teasing. about this rare, full-on, unfiltered testimony about the gaming industry and just what teasing. it takes to make it as a game artist. I personally <laughs> learned devil. a lot, not just it about up. the job itself, but about the psychology behind it, as well as how hierarchies in larger companies operate. I yes. generally appreciated the reality check on my shortcomings in my understanding of game development, and I think that in cool. the end I have become more appreciative of cool. the work done That's by cool, all of read. the talented people who work behind the scenes, and that on its own was worth the twelve dollars I spent. Oh, that's book. not bad. But 12 bucks. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you have any other books you'd recommend from game developers? Are you familiar with? First off, I'm. Uh, let me just say before we even get into to more of this, Erad told me in a direct message. He said, "I read this in a day." Now, let me just say, I'm very jelly. I listen to me. All my reading's done in the bathroom. It's the only place I can find peace of mind. You understand? As a father. The only place you can find peace is in your bathroom. In fact, there should be a study built in there alongside the toilet. I want a commode, and then I want a very large bookshelf in there as well. It's the only place you can find peace. That's how I do my reading, in piecemeal, on the shitter. So, you know, while I'm shitting, you know, if I'm really into it, uh, you know, I'll be on there for hours on end. I'm probably going to get hemorrhoids. Probably going to get hemorrhoids because I'm on there. You know, I read Dune. I read Dune on the toilet, and boy, I was hurting afterwards. It was, it was, a, it was, it was a pleasurable reading experience. Not so much a great physical. Uh, not so great physically, if you know what I'm saying, after I got done with Dune. But when he direct messaged me, <laughs> when, he, when he direct messaged me and told me, he said, DG, this, and, and I can just imagine how he said it, you know, like, it, this is how I, I saw it in my mind when, when he read direct messaged me. He's like, DG, I read this entire book in one day. And I was like, what? I'm like, why are you telling me that you read this in one day? Are you trying to eradicate me? Are you trying to eradicate me? <laughs> like, that's how I felt. That's how I felt. I was very upset. I was very upset when he said he read this in a day. He's like, do you plan on reading this too? No, God damn it. That's why I'm watching the review. That's why I'm watching your book right here. I can't read 394 pages in a day, you rat. Can you, Pepe? What, you can? God damn it. God damn it. Paul Jones and his Everybody work? Are you a Star Citizen backer, perhaps? Or an aspirant game artist? I'd like to know everything. Also, if you think I've done a good job at reviewing this book, please consider leaving a like or even better, smash that Let's, subscribe button. Okay, can we, can we, can we, right now, we need to get the, 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 the largest book, like one of the most uh, vocabulary intensive books ever written for ERAD to read. We need to make suggestions. I want, I want thousands of pages. <laughs> The, the Bible. <laughs> I finished it in three days, ZG. I finished. <laughs> I eradicated the Bible. <laughs> I finished the Bible in three days. <laughs> 
let me tell you what I think about Proverbs. <laughs> All right, a little Bible humor. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. Go go subscribe. <laughs> yeah, this is Marilyn. That's a good one, actually. I read that. Oh, welcome. Welcome, blind. Welcome. There's this All right, go over to uh, Erad's second channel, The Eradicators. I think he's doing good work over there. And uh, give him a subscribe and give his second channel some love. He does other things uh, other than Star Citizen on there. Um, and I think he's doing good work. Like, really, I generally just put everything on one channel. That's what I'm doing here. If you see, I'm trying to get the banner done, uh, like, with Pepe over here. And with DG. And so I've basically, we're basically uh, com community inspired content, gaming, podcasts, reactions, news, reviews, and Star Citizen. Like that's kind of how I'm setting it up like that. And I just throw it all on one channel. Um, and it looks like Erad is doing it where he's just basically uh, making a second channel for it. So good for him. So good for him. So it's pretty good. Give him some comments. Let's, let's look at the comments here. Let's see here. A good reminder. Oh, I love Anak. Anak always comments on my stuff. I love him. A good reminder that the developers of our favorite games are people with normal lives and face the same difficulties we all do. Great Christmas present. You're making good presentation of the book. Does he pay you? Says Mar <laughs> what? What are these people fucking brain dead? Like, look at this comment. This is like, like, did he not watch the video? See, this is the shit that pisses me off as a content provider. Listen to me. <clears throat> I did a commentary about the Odyssey versus the Carrick and how ridiculous it was and that it was a stupid conversation to be had and that it, like people had mental illness, essentially. And the punchline didn't happen until like four minutes into the video. And I could tell you that 90% of people that responded to that video didn't even understand because they never got to the punchline. The people that got to the punchline are the people in this community that I actually value. Those are the people that have an attention span. These are people that have intelligence, that take the time to be there, that understand the humor, and they got the joke. And they, they fucking, they, they, they relished it. They relished it, right? But then you get comments like this on, on, on my channel and Eradicator's second channel. And he goes, you're making good a presentation at the book. He pays you? Question mark. Literally, Erad within the first minute and a half. It's not even two minutes out. Erad literally says it under two minute mark because Erad understands as a content creator, he's got to put that shit up front that he's not a shill, that he's not shilling the book. He literally says it at the very beginning, and then you get fuckers like this guy, Marlboro Nine T bike, Marlboro Nine T bike goes. Oh, fuck, fuck Marlboro T. Like, like, I, I can't stand this guy. I can't stand people like this. They, these are the people that need eradicated. These are the people that need eradicated. All right, back to the show. I'm getting upset, Pepe. I'm getting upset.